All right, I'm going to jump right in. Um, the title, as Jessica said, is Process Architecture. I'm going to hopefully describe that for you. And we're going to focus on how we design processes, process systems, that really get used in your organization. So let's take a look at the agenda. I want to cover really four areas, uh, or five areas. I want to talk first about the need for process and the purpose so we're all on the same page. Hopefully my uh, interpretation of that is the same as yours. Um, I want to talk about some of the challenges uh, of capturing how the work actually gets done. Uh, and then I want to talk about the end game because I think that's probably the key to envisioning uh, what the process system is there for, what the purpose of it is, and talking, we're going to talk a lot about the end users and how the end user during the design of your process system is, is really what you need to be keeping in mind. Um, I'm going to dive into the details then of something that I don't think you probably will have seen anywhere else, and that is this focus on designing of processes. And then I've got a couple good examples from some real clients, uh, and I want to talk about why I think that what they have done works. And hopefully you can take some, some things back home. So I'm going to assume that my audience is are people that are involved in doing, in writing processes, in designing processes, in helping the organization improve their processes, uh, whatever processes those are. I think this is fairly agnostic, although a lot of the examples, because we do do a lot of work in the software and systems world uh, and the IT world, are, gonna, are going to reflect that. But let's go ahead and jump in and talk a little bit about the need. Uh, I've got quotes that I want to share with you, and of course we have to start with Deming, right? <laughs> it's, and I love this one. It's not enough to do your best, but you must know what to do and then do your best. And so that really, I think, hits on the point of this section of the presentation. Let's talk about the process and what we're really trying to do. And, and the way I view process is that the process defines really how the work gets done. And the work of an enterprise uh, is very varied by team, by department, by division, um, but it is often very integrated. And the world is becoming more complex. The systems that we're developing and the products that we're producing are very complex and very integrated. And by work, what I'm really talking about are the, the management work uh, that's needed to provide a product or service to your customer base. Um, the work, of course, of people that are in the value chain, which is really what we're going to be focusing on, um, that might be the value chain in your organization might be your sales and marketing, your, you know, your service delivery, your, your uh, operations people, your customer support people. And then, of course, we are talking also about the supporting functions of your business, which might be IT, HR, logistics, and, and each of those uh, functions certainly themselves have processes that they need um, in order to get their work done. So the thing about this is uh, that processes could take the form, and maybe they do in your organization, I think they do in most organizations, of, of, of tribal knowledge, what I call tribal knowledge, unwritten uh, ways of doing things that are passed on from, you know, older workers to newer workers. And, of course, the problem of telephone persists <laughs> uh, when that is the way that processes are described and how the work gets done is described. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but I think that's a given for most of us. Um, and then, of course, process can be formalized as well um, by a paper or electronic representations. And, of course, that is really the webinar focus. What is it that we need? describe processes and to help the work gets done. So I think first, before we dive into the details, we need to stop and reflect a little bit on what we're trying to achieve. And so this is, you know, what I would call a process vision, uh, and it's the thing that we typically focus on in our consulting business. Um, so, in, you know, back to dimming, it's, it's not really enough, to, uh, it's not really enough to do your best. Right? And what we're trying to show here is that when you do combine process people and tools, if you don't have them all as part of your vision, you end up with sort of imbalanced uh, a vision. If you just focus on people and tools uh, and you don't focus on process, you may end up with a process that is fairly unpredictable. If you only focus on people and process, you may end up with a process that is described, but it's inefficient. 
Uh, and if you focus on process and tools, but you don't focus on the role of people in those processes, you may end up with you know, a process that's fairly amateur. So what are we trying to achieve? I think we're trying to achieve a process that's predictable, that's efficient, right, and that is professional. Um, so the, my question to you, I guess, is do you, if you are somebody that is working in this area of trying to use and leverage processes to help your organization improve their results, do you really have a solid vision? of what the role is of process in your organization. And, you know, the, the, I, used to, I used to poo-poo this stuff. Maybe you guys, some of you younger people out there, may be in the same situation that I was in 20 years ago as I was working in this area. Uh, words like vision just did not connect with me. But the older I get and the more I see how a vision can drive people, uh, I realize how important it is. And all you have to do is pick up any kind of change leadership, you know, book like Hammer and Cotter or any of those guys, and you see that they believe that a vision firmly implemented in your head is really critical to beginning anything. Even the simplest change, they talk about needing to have a vision of what is what you're trying to achieve, um, let alone something like rolling out a process system. So we, I think most people do talk about this, people, process, and tools. Let's look at each dimension here and think about how this fits into the vision and, and refine this vision a little bit. So, you know, back to, the, back to basics, right? I get back to dimming again. Uh, the quality of a product, I believe he's the one that said this, is highly influenced, right, by the quality of the process that's used to develop and maintain it. Uh, and so we believe that the formula success for success really starts uh, with this, this issue right here of process. Um, and in order to really look at that, let's talk about, let's put a little finer point on those boxes and on this principle. What we're saying is that the organization's process definition and management approach uh, can really influence its results. So we start with goals and we end up with, you know, results, uh, but our processes can really either hinder or enable us uh, to meet those goals. And so I think we have to really look hard at whether these processes that we're all focused on and thinking are going to help the organization, whether they're really actually accomplishing that. And so we talk about process fitness when we think about these three bubbles, that process fitness is really something that comes first, and I think you'll see why in just a minute as we talk about the other two dimensions. But again, just to put a little bit more finer point on it, a well-defined and useful uh, set of processes, and these are the things that we're going to talk about, um, can uh, improve the results. But you have to know, of course, and we're going to talk about another principle beginning at, with the end in mind, you have to know uh, what output we want and what characteristics and goals uh, and results we're really looking for. So we first need to design a process that's going to fit the organization's needs. And uh, much like we first design a, a system, if any of you are involved in IT or systems or software development, uh, you know that one of the principles is that it is good to have requirements and to have some notion of an architecture before we run off and build uh, the product. Nothing uh, in that statement, hopefully, is counter to uh, anything that you all are practicing, particularly when it comes to Agile, because I think that everybody realizes that um, Agile has a benefit, uh, it, but at some level you still need to basically know what you're trying to, what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so anyway, we have to go into this effort with our end results in mind, um, and we can actually build something that really makes things worse, which is the last thing we want to do. Uh, so why, you know, process first, but what about what's next? And we think that the people dimension is probably next. And, you know, can I convince you uh, that, you know, this should be given priority? Yes, people should be given priority, but, it, but at the right time. Uh, in the organization's life. So we want to start out by defining uh, our processes. And as we grow, of course, these processes are going to evolve, but the processes and the roles and the skills that are implicitly defined in the process should be the thing that is driving the entire HR process. It's defining the roles and the skills at any given point in time 